drug interaction between cholesteramine and digoxin cholesteramine and digoxin on administration of both of the drugs simultaneously what happens so cholesteramine and digoxin when they are given there is a chance of drug interaction so in this video let us see what is the effect of this combination of cholesteramine and digoxin when they are given concomitantly and let us see which drug is actually affected so first of all let us see cholesteramine cholesteramine is a resin so it is having a structure like this it is a resin made up of styrene diamonyl benzene copolymer and one of the important uh, thing in this resin is it is having a quaternary ammonium group and you can observe this is having the trimethyl quaternary ammonium group because of this quaternary ammonium group it can be attached with an anion like the chloride anion now this resin can act as an anion exchange resin because of the easily replaceable anions and whenever an any other anion is going to react with this resin this anion can be replaced with this chlorine so that the chlorine can go out of this resin so in this way any anion can be bound with this resin replacing the chlorine this cholesteramine acts as an anionic exchange resin so suppose this is a git and this is a serum and normally cholesterol which is uh, converted into cholesterol esters is going to be absorbed from the git into the systemic circulation and once this cholesterol esters are there in the serum they are going to be bound as the ldl cholesterol as ldl cholesterol is called as a bad cholesterol and when their levels are abnormally elevated they may increase the risk of atherosclerosis now when the resin is given the resin can interact with the bile acids and the bile acids may also have the cholesterol so now the resin can bind with the bile acids rich in the cholesterol and this forms an insoluble complex and it cannot be absorbed so that the cholesterol absorption can be prevented in this way cholesteramine inhibits the biliary absorption of the cholesterol now let us turn to the digoxin so digoxin is having the structure like this and it is a cardiac glycoside it is having the steroidal nucleus attached with a lactone ring and it is a glycoside having a sugar linkage so digoxin is a cardiotonic which increases the force of contraction of the heart now let us see what is interaction between the cholesteramine and digoxin so normally digoxin is going to be absorbed from the git into the systemic circulation where it is going to reach to the heart and it is going to inhibit the sodium potassium atpase pump thereby to increase the intracellular calcium levels which results in the increased force of contraction of the heart in this way digoxin acts as a cardiotonic by inhibiting the sodium potassium atpase pump but when this digoxin is given along with this resin that is the cholesteramine now in presence of cholesteramine digoxin again can form a complex and as with the bile acids this complex is non absorbable so this results in the reduced absorption of the digoxin which decrease the bioavailability of the digoxin when this combination is used suppose a patient is having the reduced cardiac output fatigue and swelling this may indicate the heart failure in the patient and if the patient is also having a raised ldl levels it indicates the patient is suffering with the hyperlipidemia now in order to treat the heart failure we can give the digoxin which increase the force of contraction thereby increase the blood supply and in order to control the hyperlipidemia we can give the various drugs like the statins but we can also give the bile acid binding resins like the cholesteramine so if a patient requires both digoxin and cholesteramine there is a chance for the interaction between these two drugs what is the effect of this interaction so when the digoxin and cholesteramine combination is given as we have seen the cholesteramine forms a complex which decrease the absorption and bioavailability of the digoxin so when the bioavailability of digoxin is reduced the action of the digoxin is going to be reduced which may increase the symptoms of the heart failure how to prevent this interaction because this is not a significant interaction at the metabolism it is only moderate interaction at the absorption level we can easily prevent this interaction by separating the administration of these two drugs 
So this interaction can be prevented by administration of the desoxin one hour before the cholesteramine so that within this one hour desoxin can be significantly absorbed. Otherwise, we can administer the desoxin after the 8 hours of the cholestermine because cholestermine may reside for 8 hours within this GIT which may interact with the absorption of the desoxin. We can administer desoxin in any of these two ways to prevent the interaction with the cholestermine. So that's about the interaction between the cholestermine and desoxin and because cholestermine is being an anionic exchange regime and uh, its ability to form a complex with the lipophilic drugs, it can also inhibit the absorption of uh, other lipophilic drugs like warfarin as well as lipophilic vitamins. It is always better to avoid the administration of desoxin and cholestermine concomitantly so that we can prevent this uh, drug interaction.